Hello, everyone. Um, the, the light is kind of a problem, but we'll manage. Uh, so we're here to discuss with the, the most exciting panel. Uh, since the Denis Bopin gate, we can't say that it's the most exciting because of uh, Céline, so I won't say it. Uh, we have uh, actually Céline Lazorte, you're the C CEO yeah, and founder of uh, Litchi and MangoPay, and Sébastien Bazin. Uh, you're the CEO also, no? Yeah, I am. Uh, that's good. Uh, you know. Of, of Accor Hotel. Uh, when I typed on uh, Google Translate, because last year we had problems with English, it says Agri Hotel, to be international, <laughs> but of course it's Accor Hotel. Uh, when we met in the beginning of the year, Céline, at the Napoleons, you were named most innovative person of the year. Uh, that's kind of great. Uh, in front of a, a lot of women, and Sébastien was not. Uh, it was uh, Benjamin Milpied, Benjamin uh, 1000 feet. And um, <laughs> you, but he will contest next year, and uh, sure he'll win. Do you have a, a few tips you want to give him about uh, innovation? Well, you have, be, you have to be selected first. Yeah, you have to be selected. And uh, I believe as um, Milpied won last year, uh, maybe a ballet girl should be uh, winning the next year, so you can compete, <laughs> um, definitely. And Sebastian, a, a word about your presence here. Could we have a, a quick survey? How many of you guys came and uh, sleep with an Airbnb? How many of you? <laughs> maybe 20%, something like that. How many? Of you don't need an hotel? Okay, and who sleeps in an Accor hotel? It's good. Well, they all work for Accor. That, that's, that's all the left wing. They all work for Accor? Yeah, I mean, all ah. those the rest of their hands actually worked at Accor. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, of course, we don't imagine uh, the, the, the CEO of uh, Taxi G7 coming to speak with the collaborative economy because he's afraid so why did you actually come well, because i feel we're part of it we're not against it so i guess this is probably the first message for all of you i mean i don't want to have anyone challenging separating battling between old economy and new economy i think that is stupid uh, irrational if anything we the old economy have to accept adapt embrace and be part of it because this is the future. So anybody who's resisting it, anybody who's against it, will die. Uh, so my view as an Accor Hotel operator and CEO, I want to be part of it. I want to connect with them. I want to understand what they do differently. And the only way to understand is to be physically there. So I'm here to learn. That's good. Uh, do you feel the same way? Do you feel there is an opposition between uh, the old economy and the new one? No, I won't say there is an opposition. I'm journalist would suggest there is an opposition, but I believe we have a lot of things to learn from each other. Uh, I mean, I'm young, so I'm also here to learn. Um, there is good thing in the experience. Uh, en français, we say, uh, si uh, vieillesse pouvait, si jeunesse That's savait. Sympa, ça. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're looking at me here. <laughs> no, not at all. Oh, thank I'm, you. I, I'm learning from you. I'm learning from your experience. Oh, so sure. Yes, I am, definitely. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not You're only <laughs> younger for a longer time. Yeah. No, no, I'm not always lucky to have the chance to sh share a stage with the CEO of a 200K uh, employee. So I have many things to learn from you, actually. So we shouldn't be opposite. OK, so we won't opposite uh, you both. Basically, uh, Sebastian, you arrived uh, a couple of years ago at the head of uh, Accor Hotel. When the, the, the group was facing this uh, disruption with uh, Airbnb and newcomers, what were your uh, first ideas? Uh, often, like big companies, they try to, to buy innovation when they can't have it inside. Uh, you, you bought uh, a couple of startups. What were your options, actually? Well, the first thing we've done is to pause, to make a diagnostic of what happened over the last 12 years that we actually missed. And uh, I've been saying after three months of understanding, listening, and paying attention that we have missed the three waves. One are the OTAs, online travel agencies, booking Expedia 12 years ago. We felt it would be insignificant. We were wrong. Five years later, MetaSearch, uh, the Kayak, Trivago, TripAdvisor, the world, we missed them, we did not understand. 
the significance of it. Third wave sharing economy, Airbnb, we missed it. Uh, and I've been saying that we're going to have a fourth wave, a fifth wave, and I don't want to be a spectator anymore. I want to be an actor. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing out of it, which has a lot to do with why we miss them, is for the last 50 years, from 1960 to 2010, all of us, all the hotel companies, have been thinking about only two things, product and brand. And we've been basically deploying our own product, our own brand, and imposing it on outside clients. And the reason why we're all mutating is because the only thing which matters is client, no longer product and brand. And I've been having a dinner with some of you here last night. I'm insisting we need to keep the brands, but we need to be client-centric and client top of mind, which means you need to adapt to the demand, you need to adapt to something new, which is why you have a lot of new experiences with new brands, and people actually welcome them. And if you think brand, you need to think a bit, if you think client, so you need to go a bit beyond for the last 50 years, my business was only to work when the client is entering my hotel and my work was finished when the client was leaving the hotel. That is also totally wrong. What is all your economy is the numbers of touch points you have and the numbers of interaction you have with your own client. I have one, I mean, I have touch points with my client, which is three times a year, which is appalling. I mean, Facebook has touch points five times a day in France, probably 12 times a day in India. I need to go to three times a year to three times a month and hopefully to three times a week. I.e., if I want to do it with my 300 million clients, I need to provide them something which is different from a bed. I, I need to think about my client if he wants to basically spend some couple hours having only a coffee in my hotel, even though he's never going to be sleeping there, which also includes clients from some, some other hotel companies, which should be welcome to the ACO Hotel Network for co-working for a lot of things that I guess we don't do today. So it's just a shift of touch points, services, and getting into new arena in which we've never been before. So I have a question for you. I'm sorry. Uh, do you think Accor Hotel should have uh, created Airbnb? Answer is yes. And I've been saying Airbnb is a great idea. It is strong. I'm also saying that Airbnb is today seven years behind and seven years of age. So they need to adapt to the basically to their own model, which they will. But I'm also saying that it's not because they exist that we just cannot offer similar services, similar pricing, similar experience to the Airbnb guests. And because they're going to be multi-segment. Some of you, you're going to be spending time on Airbnb and you should do it and it's fine. But the same person is going to be also spending time in some of my hotels on different trips because you're going to have, you're going to be with different people and you have different needs. So those two don't basically contradict each other, except I don't address enough services to an Airbnb guest, which is why he goes to Airbnb, because it's cheaper, has more volume, and you're sometimes better located. Just I can do the same, but we need to adapt. You spoke of the, the waves that you missed, yeah. uh, and it goes so fast that these companies grow like really fast. Airbnb is only seven years old, and it's already like really big. So which, which wave do you want to catch back? Like, do, do you also intend to challenge uh, TripAdvisor, maybe? No, I don't want to catch back. I, if anything that I guess I've been also learning is, and you all know it better than I do here, is we know text it all. So I, you don't need any third OTA. Booking Expedia have 80% market share. Airbnb is there to stay and there to grow. Don't compete with them head to head because I am a service provider. Airbnb is a digital distributor, which is not the same business. I'm not going to go into the meta search uh, because they don't need another one. So I want to be part of the fourth wave. I want to invent the fourth wave, but not to catch up with the three. I just want to understand that those waves actually are boosting me because I take also advantage of it. OTAs, Booking, Expedia, I'm actually, I'm not against it. I'm only saying, each of you, when you go through Booking to an Aqua Hotel, I'm not going to be yelling at you. It cost me some money, but I guess some of you would have never heard of Aqua Hotel without Booking. I just want to make sure whenever you enter my hotel and it's being done through Booking, Next time you're going to be coming to the same hotel, to the Aqua Hotel Network, don't go to booking. It's all a matter of retention. So what is it I'm going to be doing with you for the 12 hours, the 72 hours you're going to be spending time in a Novotel, Ibis, Pullman, Fairmont, where I'm going to be giving you the knowledge that next time is going to be cheaper, better service if you go through aquahotel.com as opposed to booking. So first time comer, I'm fine. Retention is my business. Céline, when you listen to uh, Sebastian's uh uh, aggressive economic strategy, is, is it uh, inspiring for you? Is that uh, the reason why you choose to, to create MongoPay three years ago? 
Mm, I don't believe it's aggressive. I think it's smart, and I think as a CEO, you have to adapt to the market. And either you adapt, either you die. So um, I, I believe it's hard when you have such a great company to see uh, competitors like Airbnb arriving on the uh, landscape, uh, having twice the valuation, and there are just seven years uh, old, it's a seven years old company. So it, it's quite. Um, hard to handle, but at the same time, I believe competition is really, really important because it's the only way to improve your service. If you don't have any competition, and we have seen a couple of landscape where there weren't any competition, and then the offer was shitty and the price was uh, high, I won't say any example, but maybe in the yeah, travel. Uh, <laughs> no, no, like um, taxi, for example, have been stuck for a long time in an offer where they shouldn't have been stuck. And the good thing with Uber is that right now, when I take my taxi back from the airport, I have a fixed price, I have a bottle of water, and I can charge my iPhone. So, I mean, competition brings something good to you. Um, and to answer your question, uh, well, I've created MongoPay because I believe sharing economy uh, needs a payment solution dedicated to her need. Um, it's an amazing uh, landscape, growing very fast, and I believe we need to provide this solution. We were the one who had the knowledge to provide it. So we started, as you said, three years ago. Uh, right now, we have more than 1,000 platforms using MongoPay in more than uh, 22, 23 countries, so growing very fast, and we are very happy to enable the sharing economy to grow. And of course, uh, we have to improve our uh, offer, the product, every time. It's just a battle every day. You never stop. The, 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 the Wisher Fest uh, title this year is After the Gold Rush. So that's what you were saying about the, the new wave. Do you think that the, 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 the big wave of uh, sharing economy is already over? Or do you think that there, is, there are still gold to find? Oh, there are still many gold to find. From my vision, we are just at the very beginning. Do you believe that also? Well, I, I believe I, mean, I believe two things. Number one, you're going to see, I mean, I'm going I'm to put it simple for you. You have a share of the pie. You have a cake. For the last 50 years in the hotel industry, the pie was shared 90% in the hands of the hoteliers, 10% in the hands of the traditional travel agent, Carlson American Express Travel. Simple for 50 years. For the past 10 years, the pie now is shared 5% traditional travel agent, 25% digital newcomers, and I am left with 70% down from 90%. I am convinced that if I come back here in five years, the same pie, the traditional agent is going to be probably at 3%, and I'm going to be left at 50%, and you're going to have 47% ish for the new digital players. I.e., the gross factor for me is to participate in that shift between 25% to 43%. I need to be part of those new services because my core business is being squeezed on two things, which, which ask for different answers. One, I have a top line problem. Some of my guests are no longer hotel guests, they go into Airbnb or sharing economy. I'm losing them because I did not react enough to what they wanted because I was not paying attention. I have another challenge, which is a margin problem. I'm paying more and more money to Google, to Booking, to Expedia, and I'm more and more depending on them. And that also requires another answer. So I need to find a solution for my top line problem. I need to find a solution to my margin problem. In the meantime, I am being benchmarked every quarter by financial markets on multiple of EBIT, multiple of income, where all the digital players are being appraised on multiple of sales, because many of them don't have any income. So they have the benefit of the doubt of taking greater risk and not being benchmarked the same way I am. So for me, I need to basically do a lot of pedagogy, talk to my financial investors, talk to my board, and being bold, daring. I need to go into those new initiatives, knowing it's not going to be paying off for the next couple of years, but it will certainly pay off five or six years from today. And some of it I'm going to do it internally because I have 230,000 people, and all of them are very good, as good as Celine. But some of us have also the inertia of 50 years of processes, we don't think, we don't adapt as fast as Celine and other companies. So in many other directions, you might as well partner by somebody as opposed to create it on your own because it's going to be taking longer and a greater risk. So it's going to be a mixed bag between what is it you do internally, what do you do you accept to pay off for buying someone, but if you basically don't open your eyes, you feel sorry for yourself because my core business, it will still be alive. Because the one thing which is interesting, 
for Airbnb and anybody around me, none of them want to be capital intensive. None of them wants to be labor intensive. But each of them need me to stay alive because the OTA are only alive because they distribute an offer they don't own. So they're going to want to make sure that I guess I'm going to be barely alive and take advantage of me. I won't give them that pleasure. Everything that you said is recorded, so for you, the, the, the economy bet that you took for the three years to come, we'll put that video in three years before you go on stage and we'll see if you're right. Uh, Celine, Sebastian just talked a lot about uh, finance and you switched your finance model a couple of months ago with uh, Credit Mutual Arkea. Could you explain why this decision? Uh, sure. Um, so when you create your own company, uh, as an entrepreneur, I think your main goal is to find the best partner every time to help you grow. Uh, so when I started, I first um, asked a couple of investors to uh, fund the, mo the company. Um, I had amazing investors such as Xavier Niel that everyone knows, of course, uh, 360 Capital Partner, a very well-known um, VC, and uh, Idinvest. Um, and Oleg Chatsov. So I had the chance to have two business angels and two great VCs. Um, I mean, they helped me a lot through um, building the company. Um, I was 26 when I started, so just graduated, didn't knew about anything about how you hire people, how you handle with URSAF, how you manage to uh, grow your team, how you everything. So I had to learn from this guy. Uh, I had the chance that Xavier Niel give, gave me a lot of time and challenged me and always pushing you, you know, um, telling you, you have to do better, you have to grow faster, and uh, uh, you have to trust yourself. So quite a good mentoring. Um, then the company has grown. Um, we did a couple of uh, run of investment. The total amount of money we raised was 7 million euros. So not a lot of money to build a, such a technical and financial services. Um, the funny part is that um, when we started, fintech didn't exist. The word fintech, and now it's like the most trending and hot topic on hers. And it's quite funny because you see trends, but we were before the trends and we just took the wave. Um, and yeah, the company grow, uh, litchi.com, the uh, money pool uh, website um, is more than 5 million users in the world, um, growing very fast in a lot of European countries. MongoPay, as just as I said, uh, 1,000 platform uh, in all the European markets. Um, we doubled uh, each year the volume of money we process um, to uh, 200 million last year. Uh, we expect to double this year, maybe more, because we, gr we are growing faster than our business plan. Um, and yes, as I said at the very beginning, as a CEO and entrepreneur, you want the best partner for your company. A couple of months ago, um, the company was acquired by Crédit Mutuel Arkea, uh, a French bank, uh, known more um, on the side of the small banks who try to struggle at the bank industry. So um, we feel that we had the same aim and the same uh, ideas. Um, they made a very great offer in terms of, of course, valuation, uh, but also in terms of um, letting us independent because I really want to um, achieve the goal I have in my mind. I mean, uh, um, you don't do this for the money when you are an entrepreneur. You do this for because it's in your heart and you want to fight and you want to, you know, win this battle. Um, and so, yes, they were the perfect partners for us in terms of money, in terms of uh, branding, and also in terms of the technology they can provide us. And it's something quite important is that um, I think a fintech and banks have to work together and we can have the best part of the bank if we manage it the right way. So it's something I'm trying to also explain. We don't have to be opposite. I mean, I have a lot of things to learn, a lot of technology to catch, and it's something that is really relevant and I might be uh, in the right decision and right way to uh, be the leading um, payment company in the world and uh, expecting this. We'll finish the panel uh, speaking about human management and Sebastian will explain in, in a few minutes what is uh, his shadow comex and why he wants to make uh, reverse monitoring. You spoke about money, but what do you learn from uh, your mentors, from the traditional economy, from a, a human perspective? This morning, I'm very sorry because uh, Xavier Niel seems to be one of your mentors, but this morning a, a paper released about the, the management of free and it seems to be uh, kind of like Amazon's ones, uh, you know, more Zola than the... the, the the really free company that it should be. So why do you learn from them, from this big CEO? 
Uh, a lot of things. Um, you learn uh, how to uh, hire people, you learn how to um, build your vision and, and follow the thing. I mean, when you start, uh, you have dreams, then you realize it will cost a third uh, time what you expected and it will take maybe twice the time you expected. So you have to be really... Um, uh, strong and accept this and so this is I think what I've been looking for from uh, all my board uh, is being supported because uh, um, even if experience can be uh, transmitted I'll do the mistakes I mean even if you tell me sending a uh, be careful you're gonna make the mistakes I'll do it but the only thing I have to learn is not to do it twice actually so it's what I'm trying to learn and my mentors are just you know the board a uh, supporting person people helping me uh, yeah to grow the business to learn and uh, in fact it's my uh, gray hair comics you have your shadow comics I have my gray hair comics don't, don't look at me every time you yeah. say that we just are, look, we are look at someone the here just we are uh, sharing <laughs> the banner so I isn't looking at Wilson are you you actually can have like maybe a couple of gray hairs no 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 that, she's fine she's, she's fine, fine. Uh, Sebastian, everyone. It's because I'm learning. The experience is coming. I know it's called maturity, so it's fine. Everyone in the, it. in the, in the wisdom French groups, they, they speak about reverse mentoring, but they, they don't do it. Why did you choose to do it, and why did you expect from that? Well, we and Arancha uh, Balzon is in the room. She's a new head of. Uh, not, we no longer call it human resources. We call it talent and culture. We've been discussing with Arancha. It was in November, early November. And I told you that I guess when I came on board two and a half years ago, I've made a diagnosis of what happened to us. Why is it that we missed so many things? And if through that diagnosis and through discussion with our own show, we kind of actually looked at actually who is behind all those digital initiatives? Who are they? Are they different from us? The answer is yes, yes, yes. 90 of all the digital platforms in my industry have been set up by people underneath 35 years old. 90% of them started from a blank sheet of paper. 90% of them is based on technology. And 90% of them decided that scale matters and their client was global. And I am in a company which is 50 years old Obviously, I cannot start with a blank piece of paper. I have inertia, processes, habits, d norms, standard. It's run by people over 50 years old, me included. Technology, we find. We, are, we have a great technology in 92 countries. But I never bother to ask, what is it that those millennials think we should be doing? We actually impose it on them, which is actually stupid. And Joel de René, which is a very interesting fellow, which is probably one of the guys who impresses me the most, told me one day, and he's probably 78 or 82 years old, and he thinks like somebody being 22 years old. And he's been saying to me, Sebastian, you have to understand, the millennials have one line, which is, which is saying, I know what I want, and I want it now. I.e., if it doesn't exist, they will invent it. So I said to Arancha, Arancha, we need to adapt. So why don't we create a shadow executive committee and I've been asking the 12 members of my executive committee to basically put a girl and a boy underneath 35 years old in their own business unit of geography. We selected our China as the best 12 ended up being 13. Funny enough, it is actually eight girls and seven boys or seven and six or seven and six, seven girls and six boys of which my own executive committee is 11 and two. 11 male and two females. And I thought it was extremely interesting to have actually a greater number of females. And uh, we decided that all the topics, all the very confidential information, which I have only access to in my executive committee, will be made available totally transparent to that selected executive committee shadow comics members. They're going to know all my agenda every month that I have to decide upon. They're going to be able to critique to amend and to make observations and give me solutions 10 days before my own session. That way, the board of ACO will never ever make any decision without having first listened to what people underneath 35 years old would have done. Of course, I'll make the final decision, but I can guarantee you I'm pregnant. 
because I'd better listen to what they have to say, or I'd better tell them why we decided to go left when they told me to go right. It is a total revolution. Now we have a lot of new shadow executive committees, probably 25 of them in different regions, because they all started with their own comics. So at the end of the day, it's just a matter of understanding the one big difference on top of all of this is somebody who is 22, 25, 30 years old has a predictability of the future which is probably 100 times greater, better than mine. So they don't have uh, my experience. They don't have my wisdom. So if you create collective intelligence and if you accept, and I know Arantxa is going to be talking to you about it, it's one thing that I guess I want to end up with is also the one thing that you all have in your organization that I don't have is each of you, because you start from scratch, you have a flat organization. Anybody, you don't have somebody with 35 years of experience who has a corner office with two windows. You actually understand and talk to each other and there's no status. For me, I'm a top-down hierarchical hierarchy organization where we impose on people because I have 35 years of experience at our core. This is a nonsense. You need to go from top down to flat. That is not easy, which is why they all started with a blank sheet of paper and it's actually more difficult. But at the end of the day, if you have pride, energy, pleasure in any old economy, and if you understand it, will survive and will probably grow as fast as Celine, but you need to get your act together. That's uh, quite a nice wisdom. Uh, we're, we're running out of time, but Celine, uh, when you hear that, do you want a uh, final word? Maybe you want to offer uh, Sebastian a, a seat uh, at your board? Ah, actually, I was thinking like, hey, you should join my board and I should join your shadow committee. Why not? Absolutely, go for it. Merci beaucoup. Merci à vous deux. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, we're having a break. <laughs> <laughs>